Okay, looks like we're live, and I, I'm having to get creative here because of a number of different factors. First of all, the, the uh, noise in the background. I am in the city of Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. I'm attending a conference here, and all my conference participants are, are at the uh, World Expo 2020 here in Dubai, and it's great. I've never been to a World's Fair. And so, what I wanted to do is uh, first thank you for uh, joining in, especially given the kind of technical challenges that we've had recently with uh, LinkedIn Learning uh, Office Hours here, LinkedIn Streaming. Uh, so I'm going to do the best I can. I know there's a lot of background noise. I'm going to go ahead and get, um, get this uh, out to you. Uh, yesterday I presented to my conference attendees a very interesting session about the future of innovation. And then it's very appropriate that I'm here in this World Expo, which is all about innovation. Each country, every country has its own pavilion, and all of them are trying to tell, tell a story about, about what they're doing to innovate, whether it's eco innovation or technology innovation, etc. But the future of innovation really is about competition. And I want you to take away this single message that I'm live streaming here from Dubai. The future of innovation is seeing it as the competitive tip of your spear, so to speak. So to speak. Uh, when you think about all innovation, it's in the service of getting ahead of something or somebody. Innovation competition happens at the global level between countries. Uh, it happens in, between cities and countries. It happens within cities. It happens in between companies, of course, at least, of course. And it also happens within companies. And how do teams get ahead of other teams? How do people get ahead of of other people, they out innovate. I'll check my message here. So I'm going to try to get a little louder because uh, feedback here suggests you're having a little, little trouble hearing me. Darla, how does that sound? I'll see if I can boost the volume a little bit. All right, and we're going to do the best we can here. And so that was the key message to this group: to see innovation as a as a competition. It's the tip of the spear, so to speak. And, uh, okay, Sylvie, I hear, I see your message. It's a little difficult to hear. A lot of background noise here, but it is better, I'm being told. Okay, and the other key message about innovation in the future is that it's all about being able to break cognitive fixedness. And if you're a regular listener to the podcast, you know how much I talk about 
fixing this as the single most important barrier you face when it comes to innovating. And there are three types of fixing this. And this is what I shared with this group at this conference about functional fixing this. It's, it's very difficult for us to imagine a component of the system having a different function than what we're used to. Structural fixing this. It's very difficult for us to imagine a structure different than what we uh, know. And this is especially true in processes and services or any kind of policy or any kind of structure in your organization. Anything that you set up to make things more organized probably has structural fi fixedness in it. And the third type, of course, is called relational fixing. And that's the kind that is hard for us to imagine two parts of the system having some relationship that wasn't there before. And this, too, is a very common source of fixedness. So the future of innovation is really going to be about those leaders who see it and innovation not just as some business activity like quality or ethics, but really as a matter of, of uh, a primary activity of the business. And there's a great quality quote or quote that I want to share with you. And that quote goes like this. I wish I could take credit for it, but I can't. It was by Marshall McLuhan. And what he said very simple is this, the world leaders in innovation will also be the world leaders in everything else. And so I believe that. Uh, if you're smart, you're going to make innovation your primary business. Do it in a systematic, structured way to produce innovations that make you competitive over and over the tip of the spear. Now the reaction to this message from the participants was, was very good. These professionals at this conference are responsible for setting up leadership development programs and companies. And so what they like about this message is this. As they prepare current and future leaders of companies, they know now that they have a tool that they can go to and immediately start to build competency with future leaders and their teams. Now, before I sign off here, I don't want to spend a lot of time. This is a, a challenging environment here, but, uh, okay, great. I'm getting some good thumbs up from people. I appreciate that. Really appreciate your uh, signing in with me tonight, and today, actually. It's uh, a little after seven o'clock here in the evening. One of the participants, gave a very interesting talk about an upcoming book that he has about curiosity. Curiosity in terms of how business executives use their mind to look into things. They're sort of that natural innate uh, desire to learn more about things. And he's a very smart guy, Stefan. I'm looking around for him here. He's uh, somewhere at the dinner table tonight. And I've talked to him already about you know, is there a way to combine models of curiosity with models of creativity to create something new? Uh, he's very interested in it, and I'm interested in it. We pledge to get together shortly after the conference to start to see how we bring those two things together. I think it's a pretty cool idea. And the things I'm asking him is stuff like this. Is there a way to sort of turn the dial up on on one's curiosity if that's possible would that increase somebody's effectiveness at using structure creativity methods or the other way while using structure creativity method uh, uh, methods would a juice of you know sort of a an injection of a curiosity stimulus make you more effective again I don't know. We we don't we're not sure which comes first, the, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> uh, and Arlen, um, let's see if I can get Stefan's Stefan's name here. I don't think the book is out yet, but let me see if I can find somebody that uh, will get me uh, 
So, can I, so what is uh, Stefan's last name that's writing the book on curiosity? Is uh, von Heidung, I think. Von Heidung. By von Heidung? Von Heidung. Stefan von Heidung. Uh, I'll get his contact details and post that out on the show notes for this um, this broadcast. Um, the book isn't out yet. I've asked for an advanced copy because I'm going to sit down with him and really try to make this connection. I think it's such a cool idea. Like I said, this guy was a, a really good, smart guy that has, uh, I think, a good insight about executive curiosity. And it applies to all of you. You know, there's an index that he has, a test that you can take to find out your general level of, cre of uh, curiosity. It turns out I'm a very curious person about things outside of me and things inside of me. I'm not as curious about what's going on in other people's minds. Other people are just the opposite. They're more curious about what's going on with other people, uh, but maybe not as curious about themselves. Less self-awareness or it's less interest. I think there's a tie into creativity. So we're gonna explore that. Uh, I'm gonna get more information and try to develop some either uh, some, some videotapes about it or some live streams that you can learn about this firsthand uh, with me. Now, if you have an interest in this, this particular topic, you'd like to maybe join a, I don't know, a user group or some other uh, research group, <laughs> just an informal group of people that are going to look at this together, you know, why not have you join the conversation with Stefan and me while we do our Zoom meeting, uh, Zoom meetings. He's in Belgium, so we will be collaborating. If you have an interest in this, go ahead and email me at drew at drewboyd.com. And then we can get together. Uh, let's see. OK, Madeline Co. Yes, Stefan Van Hoyendong. Hoyendong. That looks like it, Madeline. Thank you for putting that in the comments. Now, can you find his book on Amazon for advanced sale? I don't even know what, how, what, how far it is in the process. Uh, literally, we just had this uh, conversation uh, tonight, <laughs> today on the way over on the bus. So it's pretty fresh. And that's what live streaming is all about. So a couple of things before I sign off here. You know, I, I talked about, I went into some of the pavilions. I can't do them all, of course. There's hundreds, a couple hundred of them. We went to the German pavilion. We went to the uh, American pavilion. I then had free time to go to a variety. I went to the Israel pavilion. I went to the Croatia pavilion. And why I went there is uh, my wife is 100% is Croatian. Her parents were from Croatia. But the, you know, the tiny little Croatia, uh, it was interesting in their pavilion, they, they really, boasted about the kinds of innovations that they've been responsible for. So some things big and small. Uh, so a Croatian man developed uh, the ink pe fountain pen, the fountain pen, all right? Well, somebody had to do it. But Croatians have also been involved in things like uh, electricity, um, looking at um, chemistry to, to uh, chemists from Croatia were Nobel Prize winners. They have also developed other issues around um, automotive. Um, so it's a pretty interesting thing how even a small country like Croatia comes to this global and puffs their chest out, so to speak, to talk about, oh, I think that's great. Now you go to the American Pavilion, and of course we talk about space and landing on Mars and going to the moon and inventing the iPhone and everything else. And us too, you know, we, we talk about our our values and our innovations. And that, if anything, was a common theme between so many of these, uh, these pavilions that I was able to attend. So, uh, okay, LinkedIn user, I'm F Croatian. Go World Cup. <laughs> so close. Yeah, the... <laughs> in the Croatian Pavilion, they made a big deal about uh, uh, their World Cup presence. It's a familiar Croatian checkered pattern that 
red and white checkered pattern of the, the Croatian national team and the Croatian flag. It was really great to see. They were very friendly to me. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and sign off. This is a short uh, broadcast. And again, given the technical challenges, I'm just happy that some of you were able to see me and get in here <laughs> and, and take a listen. I've been improvising like crazy because I'm literally in the field, in, in a desert, uh, and, and I'm making this up as I go along. But, you know, I'm committed to doing these LinkedIn learning live streams, these uh, so-called office hours. Because a lot of you do follow me. You follow my podcast, you follow my blog on the website, and uh, my LinkedIn learning courses. I've got something like 20 different courses out there in many languages. So I think these these live streams are good opportunities for you to uh, talk to me and post questions. So Trish Thorne, for example, thank you, Trish. Thank you so very, very much for sharing. You bet. I'm doing great. Okay, thank you. That's that's Darla, of course, as part of my team. But uh, do post your questions to me by email. If you really would want to talk to me in person about something, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I do that all the time with uh, people even though uh, we may not have met. If we are connected on LinkedIn, a first connection, and you have something you really want to talk to me about, go ahead and post it on LinkedIn, or again, email me, and I'd be happy to uh, get on a Zoom call or phone call and chat with you about it. So that's it from Dubai, the future of innovation. Boy, it's a, it's a very bright story here when you look at all the innovation that's happening. But it's going to be up to all of us now to think about Innovation is a structured approach and something that we can really take and use day in and day in and out of our lives to make ourselves better. One last question from Madeline. Will you, uh, let's see, convert this live stream to a LinkedIn learning course for those who missed this live stream? Well, we'll we will be uh, converting this to a very nice video over on our YouTube channel because we can archive them there and put them in playlists, which we can't do here on the LinkedIn channel. But you have both resources, or LinkedIn and um, YouTube. Now be sure to listen to the podcast too. That comes out every Monday. Very interesting episode this week. We really would uh, want to get those downloads up, up. If you wouldn't mind, take a listen to one and see if it's something that could be a regular part of your podcasting diet. I think those are another very good resource for you to learn about how you can be a more creative person on demand. Okay, somebody said I'm a generous human being. Okay, well, thank you, Anastasia. Okay, you're you're first. Get in line. <laughs> Get to the front of the line. Thank you very much. All right, good night, everybody. Have a great uh, rest of your week. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at 11 a.m. And I'm going to talk about an issue that even came up th this week. How do you teach creativity to your children? <laughs> now, whether you have children or not, I'd like you to attend because it's a fascinating topic. I'm going to talk about my experience in teaching innovation to kids, but the, the parallels in terms of what it means for you know us adults. I think it's a great message. I hope you can join me next night, next time. All right. Good night. Bye all.